dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Today, the search expanded for 22-month-old Kenneth Howard. The toddler went missing about two days ago. Since then, dozens have joined in on the search. While there is still no sign of him, nobody is giving up. WYMT's Justin Case is live in McGoffin County with an update. Justin. Steve, right behind me is the home where Kenneth lives. You can see that home back there. And also another thing you'll notice is I'm standing right next to a Kentucky State Police uh, cruiser. KSP has now officially taken over the case. Remember yesterday, McGoffin County Sheriff's Department was leading this investigation. Now investigators say this is still a case of a missing person. That has not changed. But as of right now, like you said, this search has expanded. Yesterday, they were searching about a half mile radius all around this home right here behind me. But now they have expanded it. Remember, we're near the McGoffin often uh, Floyd County line. The search has now expanded even into parts of Floyd County. They were searching an old abandoned strip mine uh, further into Floyd County. Uh, but once again, K-9 teams, helicopters, search crews walking on foot. They are all back out here again. We talked with some volunteers who drove up here all the way from Williamsburg to help search, and that's been the case with a lot of the volunteers out here helping look for Kenneth. The Lord laid it also on my heart. My heart felt warm. He told me to go. Teresa and I were messaging and we agreed at the same time we got the same feeling and that's what we're here for. Steve, now we did talk with the toddler's father earlier today as well. He is offering a $5,000 reward for any information that can help lead to Kenneth being found safe. And also another thing that we're just learning about right now, Steve, is that there's a candlelight vigil this evening that will begin at 6 o'clock tonight in Paintsville where people will pray for Kenneth and, and pray that he will be found safe. We'll have much more on that coming up on Mountain News at 6. Steve. All right, Justin, thank you. A $10,000 reward to help find a Richmond mother expires tomorrow. The family of 23-year-old Savannah Spurlock is offering the reward for anyone with information that leads to an arrest or where she may be. Spurlock disappeared back in January. She was last seen leaving a bar in Lexington. Police say she left the bar with three men. They have searched the home of one of the men, but no arrests have been made. Spurlock is a mother of four. Today, four of the five men Bell County jail officials say caused a disturbance in a sale appeared in court. Their cases were sent to a grand jury. The jailer told us they tried to flood the sale, ripped an, a, a TV out of the wall, and broke safety glass. They charged Brad Barnett, Jonathan Widener, Talmadge Posey, Jonathan Maples, and Virgil Brock with inciting a riot, among others. Posey could not be in court today. This afternoon, the judge rescheduled his preliminary hearing. We saw that sunshine return today, beautiful blue skies and a few clouds out there, but we've seen those really that sunshine throughout the day. You'll notice as we take a look at a few of those cameras, Interstate 64 and Moorhead, you're seeing those puffy clouds out there, but sunshine has been impacting up there as well. And looking over into the Mountain Parkway, we're seeing that sunshine and a few clouds over there as well. Really have been dealing with those partly cloudy skies throughout the day. Satellite and radar shows that and showing it starting to clear a little bit. We have high pressure out to the west that'll continue to move into our area, which will bring us some drier conditions and hopefully clear us out a little bit as we head especially into those overnight hours. Now temperatures they're still a little bit chilly but warmer than we were yesterday. Those low to mid 60s you're seeing those upper 60s to lower 70s out west but compared to this time yesterday we are about 8 to 10 degrees cooler really over the past 24 hours we've seen us warming up and good news is we're really going to see that tomorrow and that continuing into the rest of the work week. So as we head throughout the rest of the evening overnight hours will continue those partly cloudy skies. Temperature is going to be chilly once again will drop into about those low to mid 40s overnight and continue to see those partly cloudy skies as we head into your Wednesday. I'll have a look at that full forecast coming up in just a few short minutes. Steve. All right. Thank you, Paige. The fiance of an American Airlines pilot accused of a 2015 triple murder in Christian County says her fiance is innocent. Christian Kit Martin is charged with the murder of a couple and their neighbor who all live near Martin. The murders happened two weeks before one of the victims was set to testify in a court martial case on allegations Martin was sexually abusing children. Martin was acquitted of those charges. Now Martin's fiance says he had nothing to do with the murders. 
<laughs> Although I sympathize with the losses of the the Phillips and the Dancero families, um, Kit has given his life to public service. Uh, he has sacrificed himself for his fellow man, and he's an honest man. So his family and 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 I believe that he is 100% innocent. We will continue to support him in any way we can. The son of the couple who was killed says he has always believed Martin is responsible. Martin faces murder, burglary, and arson charges. He's set to appear in court next Wednesday. Now to an update on the numbers from the E. coli outbreak in ground beef. So far, it's been reported in 10 states, including Kentucky. The recalled product was sold in 24-pound vacuum-sealed packages. Since the last update in April, 19 more people have gotten sick, making the total number of infected people close to 200. Kentucky has the highest number of reported cases. Luckily, no one has died. May is Better Speech and Hearing Month. Doctors of audiology say in a recent study, nearly 16% of people living in Kentucky suffer from some degree of significant hearing loss or are deaf. WIMT's Hannah Reynolds has more. Studies show 700,000 Kentuckians suffer from significant hearing loss. One of those is Alfred Killian. I've had issues since the military, since my military time in 62. Uh, I was in heavy artillery and I started having hearing problems. His frustrations only got worse. One of the hardest times was when he was driving his granddaughter back home. So I said, uh, you want to sit up here with me? And she said, no, not really. I said, you don't want to sit up here so you can talk to me? She said, I talk to you all the time and you won't answer me. Audiologists say hearing loss is difficult to treat. People may not even realize that they have a hearing loss because it can vary in range. Um, it can start at what we would call maybe a minimal hearing loss um, all the way to a more profound loss where patients would be considered deaf. While it can be treated effectively with hearing aids, hearing loss is mostly preventable from taking simple steps to protect your ears like using protection in loud environments. Don't let the little things go. Yeah, talk to your doctor about it. Because hearing loss is a disease, and just like any disease, the longer you wait to treat it, the harder it is to treat. Doctors say those at risk for hearing loss include those who smoke, are diabetic, or are around loud noises. You could benefit from a baseline screening, no matter what your age. In Corbin, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. For more information on how hearing loss can be prevented, audiologist Liz Rogers says to go to sekyaudiology.com. Well, today is Kentucky Gives Day. It's a chance to give back to charities across the bluegrass. This is the seventh year for the event. It lasts for 24 hours and allows you to give to several Kentucky charities all in one place. Just go to kygives.org to make a donation. There are even prizes given to those who donate. Organizers say the last six events have raised more than one and a half million dollars. At Hazard Community and Technical College today, people from all across eastern Kentucky met to discuss a unique way to put people to work. Hosted by SOAR and the Kentucky Highlands Promise Zone, they talked about connecting God with the will to work. Speakers discussed how God created us to work and together we can teach those who are seeking jobs that there is a pathway and a desire to do what God built us to do. Our faith-based community is the place to begin that. They are the ones that are highly motivated, that feel led to be in this particular field. And if we can give them additional tools to be able to help uh, bridge that gap, to have a greater understanding, and to bring people back into community, which work does. The keynote speaker was Todd Lamphere from Paula White Ministries. Paula White is the pastor to President Trump. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, he made us laugh for decades. We'll remember Emmy-winning comedian Tim Conway. And I have some good news. Sunshine does continue as we head into the next couple of days. Warming up is also in the forecast. But what about that next rain chance? I'll have that coming up in just a few short minutes. Police at Breathitt County are looking for a man after surveillance video captures him walking onto a property and looking through the windows. I'll have the details coming up. When you see